Tell us what it's like then. What's it really like when, you know, you, you're being filmed for one of Jules's shows or a radio session or anything like that? Where does the bass fit into all that? Um, well, the thing is, we, we, we don't get much notice when we have to play on the TV show. It's often the night before, sometimes on the day we get called up. Uh, yeah, I know, so it's, it's a real roast. But that's the one thing that we've had to adapt to with Jules is um, the speed of what, of what we learn stuff. We did a New Year's Eve show with Ray Davis, and he had a new album out at the time. And he, uh, the BBC wanted him to do all the old King stuff, yeah. and he wanted to do one of the tracks of his new album. Yeah. So the, the agreement was, there was a standoff, and he sort of said, I'll do all the other stuff if you do this one track. And we didn't know this was gonna happen, so about 20 minutes before the broadcast, <laughs> we all had to dash off into little corners of the room and learn this song, like 20 minutes before yeah. it's recorded live. So. Earning your keep. Right? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. But, it, but it's great for us. Same with the radio <coughs> show. We, we, uh, we used to have to learn the song in front of the artist. Uh, Amy Winehouse came in one day. Um, we didn't know what song she was doing. Yeah. So she, we're sitting there in the studio with her, and the, the producer said, OK, we're going to do this one. They play it in the control room. And we had to learn it while she's sitting there filing her nails. <laughs> uh, and you know, you can't listen to it more than twice. Because right. if, you, if you have to listen to that a third time and, and play it, yeah. it, it's too late. Yeah. The moment's yeah. gone. So it helped us learn stuff really quickly. It helped develop our ears. Mm. So mm. It, was, it was a roast, but it, it did us the world of good. Good man. Mm. So we're going to ask uh, Dave, I'm going to ask Dave a few questions for the next few minutes, and then I'm going to throw it open to the floor. But one of the questions that I'm sure you're, you're keen to ask is, well, two questions are, A, what's the gear, his go-to gear, and B, how did he get started with that? Uh, with Jules Holland, so I'll ask the first question. What, I, I know for a fact you have something like 65 bases in your yeah, collection. Yeah, well, I, I haven't counted them recently, but... Um, <laughs> they keep I'm, multiplying. I'm, I mostly stumble over them, the more than count them, but yeah, it's about yeah. 65. Hmm. So, of those, which would you describe as your go-to rig and your go-to set? Well, the thing is, I mean, this is, for a five-string, I, I use the Sadowski, um, but, uh, and I've got my Federa as well, which is the Anthony Jackson model, six-string, but yeah. that isn't always that useful in, uh, especially in commercial settings. But, um, but these Ibanez bases, I think I've got about 15 of these now. I've only got three white ones though, that's the same thing. Um, but yeah, I first got them about four or five years ago, I got a fretless one, mm. and I'd never owned one when they came out in the 80s. And I just got it as a, as a collector's piece, I thought mm. they looked great, and then I took, took it home and plugged it in and thinking, these are amazing instruments. Mm. Um, Does it have a wide tone range? Is it yeah, well the thing is, the, the, the preamp in there is fantastic. I've got it in passive mode at the moment, but it's, it's got its own active preamp, and it's, I mean, for, for an instrument that was commercially made. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like, a, it's like a through neck design, it's angled back headstock, it's ebony fingerboard. Um, it's incredible, the, the quality mm. of these things. Mm. So that's the reason why I keep buying them. Mm. Um, no, actually, they're terrible. Don't buy these bases. <laughs> if you find any, I'll take them off your hands. I'll do you all a favour. Are you equally happy with four, five, six strings? Any configuration? Well, the only thing with this is I, I wish it was a five string because I love the sound of this. But, um, but yeah, it all depends on what we're doing with Jules. The um, thing is, in, in our band, our guitarist always uses a Gibson 335. Yeah. The drummer uses the same kit. None of our sax players switch saxes, but for the bass, it's quite specific who we play with. So some people will definitely want an acoustic bass. Some yeah. people want a fretless. Some people want a piezo sound. That's, the, that's my excuse for owning 65 of them. <laughs> and, and, and I'm sticking to it, frankly. But in all seriousness, your job is to deliver a whole range of bass roles, correct? Yeah. Well, the thing is, before I got the Jules gig, I, I was always a session musician yeah. from, from day one. Because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to... Um, you know, be able to play every style of music, to read, to improvise. Mm -hmm. I never wanted just to stick with one thing. Although I have to say, I, I do love jazz probably more than anything else. Right. That's, that's what I, if you look at my CD collection, there's more classic, yeah. uh, mainstream jazz there. But as a young musician, I was always getting called to do different stuff. And, and so I, I used to thrive on that. So when I got the Jules gig, um, it was predominantly an R&B type thing. Yeah. So that's the reason why Jules wanted me to, I mean, he was always telling me to play less, play less, play simple, play simple. He still <laughs> does. I still, we did a gig once and I had some friends in the audience and I, was, I did something a little intricate more than usual. And at the end of it, he came up to me and he said, uh, he said, Dave, just a quick word. I won't do the voice because it's not kind. Um, but he, he said to me, he said, oh, Dave, you know, could, could, could you make it? Uh, he said he was getting a little bit weather report there. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I thought to myself, I should be so lucky, and <laughs> you should be so lucky, but it was. But yeah, it's literally just a couple of little fills. It, um, but so when I got that gig, it was, I almost had to forget a lot of stuff I played. I'm almost kind of, um, yeah, dumbed down, if you like, for want of a better term. Right, yeah. 
But that was before he got a TV show. So once the TV show started, everyone was in a state of shock because no one, no one knew that that was going to happen. It was what, 91? No, well, I joined in 91. Yeah. The TV show started in about 93. Yeah. So we, we were thrown into that. None of us, the first tour I did with him was Polytechnics, a few summer balls and stuff. It yeah. was, none of us knew where that was going. So, so once the gig started and I realized I'd got to play with Chaka Khan and Cher and Belinda, all these guys, um, I thrived on that because I'd already been doing that. Yeah. I'd already been playing every different style. So yes. for me, it was, this was the perfect gig. Yeah.